Hi guys, it's Sarah Nissen from sarahnissen.com. I'm coming to you live from San Diego this evening. Uh, it's a beautiful day here. I actually spent the morning at Legoland with my son. Um, he's in a charter school program there that he gets to go to Legoland twice a week. <laughs> he's just, it was actually interesting. He wasn't super excited, but uh, when we got there, because we had to be sociable and share things, share information um with peers and that's his something that he's not super duper excited about but once we got building legos he was all for it and um so i'm gonna move this i think because i cannot figure out a good location for it but maybe that's better yeah that's more more appropriate okay so what i want to come talk to you about today is i something that i've been learning about just recently and I think I'm going to start sharing about the daily research I do into different topics and what I'm doing. So I have been researching the Nemechek protocol. It's by a doctor, Nemechek, who I think is in, you know, I don't know where he is. I think he's in somewhere in California. Uh, no, he's in Arizona. Um, Nemechek, N-E-M-E-C-H-E-K. And he has a protocol called the Nemechek protocol for autism. Um, he wrote an ebook, which I just bought, and he talks about how it's something so fascinating to me. He talks about how the gut, the upper uh, small intestine bacteria, when it's out of balance, when there's more bad bacteria than there should be, um, which is called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, SIBO. When that happens, brain damage occurs as well from um, propionic acid, I think he calls it, that comes from the bacteria and goes to the brain and actually damages the brain. And it's reversible, but it causes a lot of symptoms like autistic symptoms, ADHD symptoms, um, fatigue, people who it causes... Um, symptoms of fibromyalgia, just all kinds of things. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And it also, he says it, um, I mean, it's not so simple as that. He's a research doctor, but I'm just totally fascinated by it because it, it has a cure. It's, you can change the damage that has happened to the brain and see significant increases in uh, positive changes in those things. Reduction in pain and fibromyalgia, re reducing brain fog. Um, he's all about the gut connection with the brain and vice versa. If you've had a concussion, then it damages the gut um, flora and vice versa. Like if you take antibiotics or you um, have a surgery or something that changes your flora in your gut, then it sends the bad bacteria chemicals up into your brain. Huh. And anyway, so it fascinates me. I'm not going great into great depths into the terminology, but I wanted to share it with you because I think it's really valuable. We are starting on the Nemechek protocol and it's one of the simplest things I've ever done. Um, we're using um, inulin, which is I-N-U-L-I-N. -I -N. It's a powder that's sweet. And you start out with that. Whoa, I scare myself to death with something falling off my desk. Um, you start out with that, and that feeds the good bacteria in your small intestine. So naturally, the bad bacteria die out, the good bacteria grow and are healing. You start with that. And then you um, can, at the same time, add in high omega oil, omega-3 and 9. So that's fish oil, cod liver oil. Um, he does not prefer fermented cod liver oil. He just likes regular cod liver oil or, um, and he has certain brands that he recommends. And then there's also sunflower, not sunflower, don't say, don't listen to me, <laughs> olive oil. And then there are some oils that you want to cut out, but essentially don't change the diet. Um, except for removing omega-6 oils 
So even things like food intolerances, gluten intolerance, dairy intolerance, he thinks are all based on leaky gut, which is caused by the bacterial imbalance in the small intestine, which can be solved by this inulin. Within, I mean, like four weeks, some of the stories are. Sometimes it can't be solved by the inulin, and there's an antibiotic that he uses that it doesn't go into the bloodstream, but it's used specifically to kill out bad bacteria in the intestines. I haven't researched that much. He starts people who are under the age of 10 on the inulin first. Um, so we're just going to try it. I mean, I'm trying it too because I have some fatigue and some digestive issues, nothing super whatever, but I think I do have maybe, maybe it'll affect me positively, maybe not. Um, we're starting out on a really small dose, so just like a quarter teaspoon once a day. I've heard that if you take too much inulin, you know, it can cause bloating and gas and upset stomach, so we don't want to do that. Um, so essentially it is, and you can look it up online, I'll, I'll post the link in the, in, the, um, in the comments below, because it's free information online he talks about. You can also buy the ebook, it's like 160 pages, but I find it fascinating, so I'm reading through it. Um, he says, so basically you cut out, so one of the key features is cutting out omega-6 oils. And omega-6 oils are basically vegetable oils. Um, he, they are soybean oil, sunflower oil, corn oil, safflower oil, cottonseed oil, grapeseed, peanut oil, margarine, shortening. No good. They have way too many omega-6s. It's easy enough for us to get omega-6. We're overdosing on omega-6 oils and it's causing problems, a lot of problems. So we need to decrease those, increase omega three and six, excuse me, omega three and nine, and also um, the sun. I keep saying sunflower. I'm so tired. Um, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, is a key to it as well. Um, I, he doesn't address things like tallow, animal fats. But I think grass-fed, pastured, t beef tallow, or lard from pork that has been not fed those things, right? You don't want the animals to be fed soy, safflower, corn, either, because it transfers to their fat as well. So if you can get fat from animals that were not fed those things, then the fat is super healthy. Um, butter from pastured cows that were not supplemented with that stuff is perfectly healthy. Um, so once again, I mean, it's right on board with what I already do with my family. I don't eat any of those things as it is. Avocado oil. I'm live on Facebook right now. Avocado oil. I have been eating a lot of, and I don't think it's actually the best either. So we may be Cutting back on that, you just you don't like, you don't have to completely eliminate it, but just know that we eat so many omega six fats that it's best to cut them out whenever you can. Peanut oil is one, so peanut butter lessen your amount of peanut butter, increase the amount of other um, fats. You know, um, I mean, I even take a tablespoon of butter and just eat it once in a while, but. Basically, that's what we're going to start doing. So I'll report back on how our behavior is. He says, don't do probiotics during this. Don't do other digestive enzymes um, because it messes with the inulin's effects in the small intestine. And um, cut out any other supplements that are not have not been necessarily helping. So I'm going to try that. We're going to continue. We're, right now we use homeopathy as well for Zane. And it's been beneficial. So there, I don't think those two things counteract each other. The homeopathy builds the, you know, the source energy and builds up your life force energy from the inside. So it strengthens it. So it should make the protocol work better and faster if you're supporting the um, intestinal bacteria correctly. You know. So I think that 
think it's going to be good. But I just I was fascinated when he you can research online, find videos um, with him talking on YouTube, and it's just amazing to me. So anyway, to recap, Nemechek protocol. I'll post a link below. But basically, balance the intestinal bacteria. Don't eat as many omega sixes. Eat more omega threes. Reduce the brain inflammation um, and increase neuroplasticity. So that's the brain rebuilding itself. And you do that with eating more omega threes and with eating olive oil. And he recommends cooking, you know, lightly heating olive oil and any of the things you can use olive oil on, butter as well, and um, cutting back on those oils like um, soy, sunflower, corn, safflower, cottonseed, grapeseed, peanut oil, margarine shortening. And those things are in a lot of processed foods. That's like when you go to the grocery store. He actually says that canola oil is acceptable, which is interesting, I avoid that. Um, coconut oil is also good and palm kernel oil is okay so those are good but the other oils are not so basically canola apparently is okay I would still avoid it but I would choose coconut oil palm kernel oil lard tallow butter ghee and sun I keep saying sunflower and olive oil but do not use sunflower oil even though I keep for some reason slipping it in there um, and I mean I think that's good for anybody in any case and I don't see why adding a little bit of inulin to your diet wouldn't be would be a bad thing either um, just to see if it might work but it's interesting he cuts out all probiotics all the things that I've thought were like a good idea to supplement with all probiotics don't take any other supplements and don't necessarily cut out any gluten or dairy or anything from your diet unless it's causing serious digestive problems. He actually suggests that you can um, heal those food sensitivities by using his protocol and I'm curious if that's the case because we actually have been um, on the fine gold diet which removes a lot of foods because of salicylate sensitivity and zane we found out and me I think so I used to have like mucusy when I would wake up and I stopped eating those things, um, the things that were high in salicylates, and it went away. But the Nemec Dr. Nemechek says that it's because you are reducing the things that are inflammatory because they've been going through your gut. But why? Why is that? And that's still what was bugging me. It's like, why am I sensitive to that stuff? Can't I heal that? You know, I, th I feel like I can. So this is probably the next step in that. It's like, okay, let's heal why I'm sensitive to that and why certain foods affect me so much. I saw a post of somebody asking about some eczema and a lot of people said it's related to gluten, it's related to dairy, you should cut that all out. But why does dairy and gluten cause eczema, right? It seems like there's something the matter with the gut to me. Of course it could be because of pesticides in the dairy if it's not organic or something like that but I still think I mean also certain things can damage the gut but I don't know to me it seems like we should be able to eat things like that in moderation so it's more to do with the health of the gut the health of the brain because of the health of the gut and it's like this cycle of the brain isn't healthy so the gut's not healthy and the brain's not healthy so the gut's not healthy so why don't we heal it you know Heal it. That's my my motto. <laughs> Heal it. Um, so that's my rant or whatever today. Um, he does have a little bit of a different protocol for adults because we've been this way for a while. But I'm going to try it and see how I feel. And it can't hurt. I mean, I figure it can't hurt. The inulin is organic. It comes from agave. I think some kind of it's called prebiotic fiber. I'm not sure what exactly it is, but it feeds the pro the good the bacteria. But probiotics just by themselves can cause an imbalance too because you're putting an influx of bacteria into your system. Even though they're supposed to be good, they can actually cause 
a, sh a shift that's not so beneficial. So I am looking forward to that. I was actually not taking probiotics anyway because I didn't feel very, I didn't feel any benefit from them. I didn't see any benefit from them. So I was eating a few probiotic foods um, daily, but not adding them separately. I would think that maybe he doesn't even want people eating excessive amounts of um, cultured foods, but there's no mention of that in the book. I may have a, um, what do you call it, consult with him just to learn from him. You can do it via Skype. He, he doesn't treat people over because he's not licensed in other states besides Arizona, but, but you can consult with him and learn from him, and I'm pretty fascinated with it. So this is my latest thing. I will let you know. One thing he does also do that he does in his office, he says he does vagus nerve stimulation, which also sounds really interesting. It just like triggers, it's, it's by prescription, but he triggers the vagus nerve, which is the nerve that rules pretty much digestion and lots of other, other parasympathetic systems, things that happen in your body. So, um, if this doesn't change things for kids, like oftentimes a lot of nonverbal autistic kids go on this protocol and it, they become verbal after using it. And that just amazes me. Like, that's amazing. What a, what a simple protocol to use to have speech from your nonverbal child. So if you do have a nonverbal child, I would definitely recommend trying it. You don't need a prescription for any of this stuff. And I can share the links to the inulin and to the olive oil that he recommends below this post as well. So let me know if you want any help navigating any of this. I love doing research about these new things that I find. I find these different, you know, different um, outside the box somewhat treatments and solutions for problems relating to autism, giftedness, and special needs in general. Um, and I love helping people with it. So let me know if I can help you. Um, I would love to help you download my real food resource guide from my website, sarahnissen.com. And I have a book out about real food snacks for kids on the go. None of those bad oils are in any of the recipes in there. They're all the coconut oil or ghee or butter in some of them. So check it out. I will post the link to that below as well as the link to Dr. Nemechek's um, website. All right, talk to you later. Contact me if you need any help with any of this. Please leave a comment below so I know that you're watching. And share this with any of your friends that you think could use this information. I mean, if you have friends with you know, kids with autism, ADHD, ADD, behavior problems. It really seems to me like it's something to try. Um, all right. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye.